Lakshmi Tantra Chapter 24 Structure of Tarka Aum The Absolute Brahman, the Ultimate Dhaman Presence, the Supreme and Incomparable Effulgence, Brahman which is identical with Lakshmi Narayana, is faultless and pure. It alone exists, pervading this entire world. It is the highest and greatest. I am the absolute eyehood of that Brahman, the Supreme Soul. To help all living beings, I voluntarily manifest myself in the forms of Matrika mantras containing Shabda Brahman. In the form of the mantra, I follow each particular deity referred to in it. In the beginning, the adept should evoke me in my original Tara, carrying a cross, savior, protector, form. First, the adept should take the letter Dhruva, A, then add the letter Karna to it, A plus U. Then he should add the letter Nabhi, N, to that, and finally unite them together, A plus U plus N equals Aung. Having thus constructed Aung, the adept should first decorate that Brahma Tarka with Bindu, then with Nada. Then, as accompaniment to this Tarka, he should meditate on the eternal Brahman, made up of these three letters in the Vaishnava form, the mind flowing towards it incessantly like the continuous flow of oil. In this Tarka, A represents Aniruddha, the fifth vowel, U, represents Pradyumna, N represents Sankarshana, and Bindu represents Vasudev. O Shureshwar, the indivisible, integral nature of these four letters is the Nada. The highest perfection of Nada is the Eyehood of God, who is the highest goddess. She is the most subtle Shakti, called the space that exists inside Nada. Nada represents the Supreme Brahman, the essence or soul of everything. The space surrounding Brahman is called Daharakasha, the legendary abode of Brahman, or Brahman's very presence insofar as it can be grasped by the human mind. She, who is identical with myself, is subtle, pervaded by Shabda Brahman, and all-pervasive. When the Nada ceases to be actively present, the absolute and luminous Brahman called Lakshmi Narayana becomes spontaneously manifest. Shabda Brahman represents the dawning of God's creative activity, which, though active, has not as yet created any object. It is the state of existence when God or Shakti is potentially creative. Thus I have now told you about the Dhaman, Vaishnava presence of the Supreme Person. Listen now to the description of the essential traits of its form, which is tranquil and inert. First, taking the Visharga, aha, the adept should add Surya, mm, to it. When these are firmly joined together, there arises the powerful mantra, Aung. Visarga is the natural, inert, pure existence, unrelated to creation, whereas Bindu represents the state of dissolution when the creation is dissolved or lies dormant in primordial nature, Prakriti, which is also the beginning of creation. As this pranava contains both Visharga and Bindu, this is the highest presence, 
representing both Shakti and dissolution, which, if constantly contemplated upon, reveals to the meditator the unalterable, absolute reality. Dissolving all objects belonging to both the pure and impure creations, Shakti, who is again ready to start creating, arranges the further movement on Surya or Purusha, who is eternal, supreme, and is in the form of Boktre, the enjoyer. Then she reappears out of that state of existence which contains Agni and Soma and attains Dangpatya, the perpetual intermediary coupled condition consisting of Bindu and Nada. Shakti attains the subtle coupled condition identical with the divine inertia and exists in the divine, pervasive, supreme self. According to the learned, the coupled condition, Aung, has three and a half matras, measure units. One measure for each of the three sounds, A, U, and N, while the dot, Bindu, counts as only half a matra. O Chakra, the three fires, Garhapatya, Ahavaniya, and Dakshina, the three worlds, Bhu, Bhuvaha, and Svaha, the three Vedas, Rik, Yajus, and Sama, the three Gunas, Sattva, Rajas, and Tamas, the three gods, Brahma, Vishnu, and Rudra, three Vyuhas, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha, the three social classes, Brahmana, Kshatriya, and Vaishya, and the three basic vowels, A, E, and U. Whatever group of three you find in this world, you should consider it to represent the first three components of Aung, while the half-measure unit, Bindu, stands for the pure existence. All words have emanated from the letter A. From U have emanated the three brilliant energies, sun, moon, and fire. O Purandara, out of M emanate all the tattvas, cosmic principles, starting with the earth and ending in Prakriti. The brilliant half matra is the supreme kala, nada consisting of consciousness. Among the two sets of six vowels, the even numbered vowels, a, e, u, ri, ai, au, representing the six divine attributes, should, along with the bindu at the end of each of them, be placed on the body of the preceptor. Aung Aung Hridayay Namaha Aung Ying Shirase Svaha Aung Ung Sikhayay Vyashat Aung Ling Kavachaya Hung Aung Ain Nitraya Vyashat Aung Aung Astraya Pat then again, O Pakashasana, the preceptor should place the six attributes, each preceded by Tara, on his own navel, back, arms, thighs, knees, and feet. Aum Jnanaya Namaha, Aum Aishwaryaya Namaha, Aum Shaktaye Namaha, Aum Balaya Namaha, Aung Viryaya Namaha, Aung Tejase Namaha. Having thus placed the mantra along with Anga and Upanga mantras, the preceptor should meditate on Purushottama existing in his own self. Now learn from me the description of the process of identification of the preceptor with the cosmic jiva, 
starting from its vishva, state of existence, until the dissolution of its separate existence as jiva. Vishva is the Lord in the state of waking, who stimulates all the sense organs into action, and who is the enjoyer of the five objects, sound, touch, form, taste, and smell. The adept should meditate on Vishva, who is identical with Aniruddha, as the first sound, ah. Then he should dissolve that deity with all his accessories in ah, and then dissolve ah in the Taijasa deity Pradyumna, who travels through the way of dream and stimulates all functions of the internal organ. He should then merge that deity along with his accessories in U. That U again should be merged in Lord Pragna, existing in the form of Sankarshan, the omnipresent ruler, who abides in the state of deep sleep and ever stimulates the activity of breathing. After having merged him, the Lord of the Gods, in the half-measure unit that stands for Turiya, the divine Vasudeva, in whom knowledge and bliss inhere, he should merge that Turiya in that which is beyond Turiya, Turiyatita, and consists of Lakshmi Narayana. Turiya is the soul's state of existence just beyond material influence and polarization, whereas Turiyatita denotes its supravyuha state of existence, where the soul's infinite divine majesty and splendor are fully manifested. Then, merging his own self therein, the preceptor should dissolve his individuality into her, the divine I-hood belonging to Vishnu. Having become identical with her, and having reached the state of Laya, complete identification with Shakti, the presence of God, he should come down gradually to the state of waking. Then, after initiating the disciple, the good preceptor, who has become identified with me, should himself first teach the disciple over a long period of time the Tara Mantra, along with all its branches and accessories, and also the method of attaining Samadhi by meditating on Aumkar, the disciple should give himself, together with money, to the preceptor as a dakshina. Then, obtaining the preceptor's permission, the disciple should practice the ritual performance of Purascharna, the five rites, japa, fire sacrifice, bathing the deity, ritual bath, and offering food to brahmanas that enhance the power of the mantra, betaking himself to the bank of a great river or to the temple of a siddha established by an adept who has achieved liberation from the bondage of transient existence and rebirth, or to a palasha forest of kamarka trees, where the rest of the world is screened out of sight. There, the ascetic adept, completely controlling his senses, should daily practice the duties of bathing and savana ablutions three times a day. He should eat only once a day, either milk or barley grain or such food as he may obtain by begging. He should have only kusha grass as a seat he must wear coarse garments made of grass and should lie on kusha grass. He must always hold a staff of alasha wood and cover himself with a black deerskin. Then, with his mind fixed on me, he should remain completely pervaded by me, and then, following the method directed by the preceptor, he should constantly practice yoga culminating in the attainment of true knowledge and samadhi.
where after remaining silent, he should repeat the Tara Mantra, Aum, a million times, which saves souls from worldly existence. This is Japa, the first component of Purascharana. He should then perform Homa, fire sacrifice, offered to the deity of the mantra a hundred thousand times with tulsi leaves, wood for the sacrificial fire, and purified butter. This sacrifice includes all four of the other components of Purascharna. Then I, the absolute I-hood belonging to Vishnu, being pleased with him, manifest myself to the mind of this adept, which has accurate distinctive knowledge of the truth. And that accurate knowledge of the truth reveals the samarasya, absolute identification, of myself with God, which state is known as Lakshmi Narayan. Such an adept becomes Jivan Mukta, emancipated while still alive, sanctifies the world with his glance, and all his mantras, both popular and Vedic, become efficacious. He becomes a master of the Vedas, of all other sciences, of all systems of philosophy, and of the knowledge of sacred places. All applications and methods of application of all the mantras are in fact an application of this pranava mantra, Aum. The three Vyahritis, Bhu, Bhuvaha, and Svaha, emanate from its three letters, and the Savitri, the all-purifying Gayatri mantra, emanated from its feet. From Savitri's feet emanate the three Vedas, known as Rik, Yajas, and Saman. Thus all speech, both secular and Vedic, consists only of the pranava. As the tiny seed of the banyan tree contains the germ of the whole big tree, so the entire world of speech is ever contained in pranava. This Aung is the primary great bija, the primary source sound, Shabda Brahman, the Supreme Presence and the purest and highest principle, Mahat. Aumkara, Pranava, Tara, Hangsa, Narayana, Dhruva, Vedatman, Sarva Vedadi, Aditya, Sarva Pavana, Mokshada, Mukti Marga, Sarva Sandharanakshama. These and many others are the different names of Aum used by the learned in different shastras. The highly auspicious aspects of the excellent Aumkara have now been mastered by you. It is the protector of the ignorant as well as of the learned. For those who seek heaven, and want to cross Sangsara, Aung serves as a boat. As it is a combination of the letter Ha and the letter Ao, this is called Prasada. The Prasada mantra is Aung Hao, which is the Bija mantra of Tara, whereas Hangsa is its Sangya mantra. This eternal concentrated mantra is the essence of all realities. O Lord of the gods, consider sadhana, the means of attainment, pratipatti, attainment, viniyoga, application, and dharana, deep concentration, as belonging to this bija called prasada. Hangsa, the great mantra is its Sangya, addressing mantra. Consider Hangsa Mantra's first letter to represent the enjoyer, and the second 
the object of enjoyment. The first letter, Ha, contains Narayana, while the other, Sa, contains Shri. Consider, O Chakra, these two eternal letters to consist of Agni and Soma, and in between these two exist Bindu and Dharma. Bindu is creation, and Dharma, a name of the deity of death, is dissolution. Let the Boktri letter, Ha, be breathed in from the Adharasthana, Muladhara, the chakra just below the navel, to the Murdhan, the top of the palate, by drawing the air from deep down near the navel up to the top of the palate. Then the second letter, called Bhogya, Sa, must be breathed out from the mouth. By the utterance of the Hang Sa, the entire creation is reconstructed. This mantra vidya, which is perfect in every part, is known as Ajapa. This mantra is uttered automatically in the 80, 100 million and 64 types of living beings and all the individuals belonging to each type. This vidya, glowing inwardly, surges up spontaneously together with breathing. Its appearance and disappearance are like the inhaling and the exhaling of breath. Prana contains sixty breaths. Six pranas are counted as one nadika. Sixty such nadikas make one whole day and night. These are the divisions of time. So every day each embodied being makes japa of this mantra 21,600 times. O king of the gods, know that when this hangsa mantra is awakened, it is as potent as 21,600 repetitions of any mantra. But at the beginning of each day, the intelligent adept should resolve to do a certain number of repetitions of this mantra, and he should then arrange the mantra's five limbs accordingly. Now hear from me the form of these five limbs. The faultless and illusionless Surya and Soma, Ha and Sa, having the ending of the dative case, are connected with Namas and Swaha. Then follow Vyaushad Hung Pat, and then the Mula Mantra followed by Pat. This creates the Astra Mantra. Aum Namo Hangsaya Swaha Vyaushad Hung Pat. These are the five limbs of the mantra. This very mantra, when reversed, so hung, is called the Paramatma Mantra. Having envisaged Shakti, Sa, along with all the auxiliaries, connected with Surya, Ha, the enjoyer, the rest must be considered to be like Pranava, and this is the method of forming the Sangya Mantra. According to the Pancharatra injunction, this has three Pada mantras. Aung Vishnave Namo, Aung Namo Narayanaya, and Aung Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. O Purandara, the fourth Pada mantra of the Pranava is Aum Jitang Te Pundari Kaksha Namaste Vishvabhavana Namaste Stu Rishi Kesha Mahapurusham Purvaja. The masters of ancient sciences knew the mystery of these mantras along with the Aumkar. The Anga Klipti or Anga Nyasa 
should be performed with words expressing gunas, jnana, etc., joined by pranava and ending with namas. In the same way, the adept should perform upanga nyasa. While performing upanga nyasa, if the mantra to be used possesses less letters than required, then the last letter is to be repeated till the required number is reached along with the appropriate guna word. In this instance, 12 is the minimum number of letters required. So, for example, in the mantra, Aung Namo Vishnave, the last letter has to be repeated until the desired number is obtained. Similarly, in the case of mantras possessing too many letters, then the excess number of letters coming after the first 12 letters should be used altogether with the guna word tejas in the final upanga nyasa. The single Tarka mantra and the four mantras preceded by it are considered to be the Vyapaka, essential mantras in the Pancharatra system. There is nothing impossible to attain in this world through the power obtained from worshipping these excellent mantras. Together, they serve as the Nishreni ladder, consisting of five steps to ascend to the state of Absolute Brahman. This divine and highest existence, consisting of five mantras, verily consists of me, Shakti. The adept who has properly acquired skill in the application of mantras through their archana, worship, japa, repetition, and dhyana, meditation, after having attained my own essence belonging to Vishnu, achieves the Absolute Brahman. <laughs>